okay, this is cloud to cloud registration and uh, like a cyclone, this is version 8.0164 bit. <clears throat> First thing I'll always do is just go into the preferences, um, sorry, just go into the preferences and go into registration and um, I'll just change the default settings for just these three settings here. So I'll loosen up the default search distance, change it from, I think it's 100 mil to 200 mil. Um, I'll change the sampling percentage from 3% to 75% and the iterations to 500. Um, just so it's using more data and also it's uh, doing more calculations for the um, declare to cloud optimization. So I'll change those and just hit OK. And, and the next thing I'll do then is create a registration by right clicking on the project and creating a registration, then opening that up and then adding the scan. So I have about eight scans from the inside of the church here that we're going to use. So um, I'll open them in and then I'll go straight into the uh, cloud constraint wizard here, which opens up this little matrix. Just a useful tip um, is when you're in the field, if you're in, if you're scanning inside a building or something like that, then try to do the scans in a sequence so that one scan overlaps with the next one and so on and so forth. It just makes it quicker and easier in here to, to know what scans overlap with each other. And also it's probably a good idea to keep some good field notes with sketches, uh, again, so you know what scans overlap with what and it'll just speed up the processing in the office. So you'll see, um, I also like to rename the scans like uh, something simple like scan one, two, three, four, or whatever, or church in this instance, just so that when you open up this matrix and hover over one of the uh, little constraint uh, boxes that it shows you uh, what, the, what the actual scans are instead of a big long timestamp. You see here it's just church one, church two, church two, church three, church four, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And the idea of uh, doing them in a, in a logical sequence in the fields that we can use the bare minimum of constraints to get the data initially registered and then after that we can tell it, to, once it's registered, we can tell it to look for any other overlapping scans automatically. So generally speaking, uh, I'll have done the scans in a sequence, one overlaps with two, two overlaps with three, etc, etc, so that I can just pick the bare minimum in here to get the data initially orientated. So we select all the ones we know are overlapping and then just hit update and it brings you into this little wizard. So it'll have the first two scans ready to go. And first thing I always do is jump to this scan origin. So pressing the S key on the keyboard, turns it into seek mode and holding then shift and left clicking somewhere on the, on the data set. Um, and it'll bring you into the scan origin looking at that position that you clicked. So I'll do that for both of them. Just gets me quickly. Um, you know, into the data set so that I can start finding those common points easily. So that basically what we're doing is we're picking um, three sets of point pairs. So that's basically six points in total in uh, three in each data set that are common. And they have to be within that 200 mil um, distance of each other. Because um, basically if you, can, if you imagine these scans are currently just in the scanner's own coordinate system. So there's no spatial relationship. So that's what we're defining here by picking these Six, or these three sets of point pairs were basically just doing a rough transformation from one onto the other so that they're sitting close enough for the uh, the cloud to cloud algorithms or whatever to uh, then adjust the data. So once we're in then we start looking for point pairs and we're going to use this multi-pick tool to pick them and so we just need to pick these you know within 200 mils of each other so I just tried to you know be as quick as we can and this is no need getting too hung up there's no point picking any more than three uh, either, it'll only use three, uh, so it's no point picking six pairs to try and improve it in any way, it doesn't make a difference. So um, that's the first point pair, then I'll just uh, move around and look for something else. So I'm just holding then the control key and left clicking to rotate about the origin, just a quick way to do it. And so I'll use the seek key to zoom in on something I'm interested in. So I'll just move in, catch these windows, corner, Corners. That's now two point pairs. You just be careful not to use a single pick because it'll override everything you've picked. So that's two, and maybe something over this side of the room. And this data is um, collected with a like a HDS 
7,000. It was just some data collected when uh, the instrument first came out, just as a bit of a, a test. Okay. So what have we got over here? Maybe the end of the handrail. So something like that. Something like that. And once you've picked your three sets of points, we just hit constrain and it'll automatically increment onto the next two scans. So then again, I'll just jump straight into the uh, scanner's origin and start looking for some common points again. These speakers are looking pretty good. So using seek to click on it and then zooming in, and then multi-pick to pick my two common points. Probably pick something on the pew or whatever it is here. So pick again and then selecting the point. So it's two. And maybe the other speaker if I can see it. Maybe that'll be it. So it's a good idea as well to try and spread these points out a little bit so that they, uh, they're not all in a straight line. move on to the next one. If for some reason one of your picks is outside that 200 mil, you'll just get a little error saying that only two points were were, uh, uh, were within the accepted distance, so you might need to go and re-pick another set just to, uh, to make sure you get the job done. Okay, so that's this guy over here. If you want to deselect a point as well, you can click back on it again and it'll get rid of it. That's that. So once I find something that I know is a good is a good point, look at these speakers. I'll keep going back to them. So every time you add one of these constraints, they populate this little list up here. So you can see we've added three so far. So one to two, two to three, three to four, and so on. So that they'll keep populating as we go along. And once we've added all the initial constraints, we'll then run the optimization to, um, to actually carry out the, the uh, cloud to cloud registration. Again, just holding, going into seek mode, holding down the shift key and left clicking to bring me into the scan origin and then I can start picking my um, comment points. church this time. Okay. Oh, so there obviously one of the point pairs weren't within that 200 mil so I'll just quickly pick a uh, another one. Maybe over this side. Okay, so this one is up inside the OK, 
Okay. Pick, pick. Strain. So then holding in or hitting S going into seek mode, holding in shift and then left click. I can zoom in here and then the same uh, with this one here. So again now I'm back uh, looking at the same area and then I'll just pick one, two. Go down the other end. So this is obviously an ideal example here where we've got lots of overlap, and um, overlap is obviously the key to this. So if you're doing it in a in a building, you just got to make sure you do enough scans in doorways, etc., that uh, that you have enough overlap to easily uh, allow this workflow. But um, I think it it works quite nice. Mm, find somewhere else here. Okay. Okay. Okay, and then the last one, so we can see this is that room here. So just jump in there, and then the same, jump in here. And we can um, pick a couple of points, maybe on the window here. Here and just rotate around, holding down the control key and left clicking again. Just rotate around the origin quickly, and I'll pick uh, maybe that point there, which is this one here, and maybe something else in this room, maybe and this table. Oh, sorry, the altar it is. Yeah, just pick the corner that, which is here somewhere, hopefully close enough. Yep, so that's it. That's all of our picking done, and you see now we have our eight, or sorry, one it should be seven if there's eight scans. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven constraints from scan one to scan eight. So we'll shift select all of them. And then just you can click on our parameters here and just make sure yeah, we have 75% and 500. So uh, we then click the optimize key, and it'll actually now start to go through the uh, registration process here. So it gives you some RMS data. Generally, we want to see a really small little sliver of blue here in this corner, which is usually a good indicator that the uh, yeah, it's, it's found a good result. I'll just pause for a moment while it does this, and I'll come back when it's finished. Okay, so the uh, initial optimization of the registration is completed, so it opens up a little results sort of a dialog box here uh, with some general information. And these results all look pretty good to me. And my understanding, and maybe someone from Leica can correct me, is that yeah, I don't think you can align the scans any better than around well six meters or six sorry millimeters with the statistics, just by virtue of the accuracy of the point cloud. And maybe somebody from Leica might be able to clear it up a bit better in terms of. Um, understanding the results, but just from my own 
experience and testing these results would indicate a very good adjustment. You can see the amount of redundancy here we have uh, in terms of the points used. You know, you're using 800,000 points, you know, 600,000, you know, so you've got a huge amount of redundancy in this situation here. Um, obviously, that'll depend on the overlap uh, you achieve uh, when you're doing it in, say, a, maybe a tight building or something like that. But um, in general, it's a pretty straightforward workflow. So once that's done, the next step then is to actually hit register to register it. And now it's registered. Um, you could go ahead and open it up at that stage. But what I would do then at this stage is go and hit the auto add cloud constraints. Because what we have here, if I just go back to the uh, little cloud constraints wizard, we have all these other scans here that potentially have overlapped. Like scan one could have overlapped with scan eight, uh, three with seven, three with five, etc., etc. And now that it's initially registered, it can go and look for any other overlap and add those constraints automatically, which should help improve the overall registration. Um, again, you might not necessarily have this amount of additional overlap available if you're working in a type building or something like that. But um, it's, it's definitely useful to run this auto add cloud constraint. You can also do it if you're using targets. So if you've gone and you've used targets to do uh, registration, you can come in and still auto add the cloud constraints to maybe tighten up your registration a little bit. So we'll hit that, and uh, you'll see in this instance it's found 21 additional. So because we're in such a big open room, it's found a huge amount of uh, additional constraints. So we'll we'll add those to the adjustment and um, and see what happens. You can see um, they're all quite good, obviously, because we've got a lot of uh, overlap in between these scans. Um, so again, I'll just um, I'll just hit pause and um, I'll come back when it's added in the additional 21. Okay, so it's um, it's finished adding in those additional constraints. You can see now we've got quite a few here. Um, these all again seem they all seem pretty good to me. Um, there might be instances where it might find some overlap, but it might necessarily be very good. Um, so you also have the option um, um, of you know deleting out any constraints from here. You might you, you don't want to add into the adjustment. You could just delete them out if they were. Uh, introducing any sort of sizable error. Um, so that's it, pretty much registered. So the next step then is to go uh, create the scan world, or sorry, create and freeze the registration and then create the model space. Um, used to be able to create and open it, but it seems to be grayed out. I'm not sure if it's something to do with uh, this, this version of Cyclone. But we close the registration and now we can open up the scan to see see the actual result. pretty good so uh, just one or two quick more tips that I'd like to do is I'd like to just go into ortho mode by hitting O on the keyboard and I'll assign each of the scans a unique individual color uh, so we can do that by going to tools scanner scan world explorer shift selecting your scans and then hitting this uh, apply scan world color to scans and it gives each one a separate color automatically then what we can do is we can cut some slices through the data and just visually QA the overlapping data to ensure there's no gross errors there anywhere. So I'll just like, uh, cut a little slice, I'll just do one. So that opens up into a new model space and you can zoom in and you can hold the Alt key down to slow down the rotation. Just visually check to ensure that there's no gross errors anywhere in, uh, in our overlapping data. It all looks good. And that's pretty much it from the stage then. You could uh, you could um, you know go in with a total station or something and you know shoot a couple of corners and georeference the data to a to a coordinate system if that's what you wanted to do. Um, otherwise the data is now registered and you could start uh, producing um, producing some deliverables or whatever it is you want to do. So uh, yeah that's pretty much cloud registration in Cyclone.